Have you ever asked yourself these three questions? Number one, I know God wants me to talk to him, but I don't have a desire to do it. How can I change that? Number two, how can I be disciplined in my prayer life when I'm just way too busy? And number three, how do I hear from God and how do I know when God is speaking to me? Welcome back to another video with Kingdom Motherhood. I'm so glad you joined me today. I wanna to take these three questions and dissect them for you so that we all can learn a little bit more about how to have a true and close relationship with God. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you never miss a video that I put out. And without further ado, let's do it. So I know God wants me to talk to him, but I don't have a desire to do it. How do I change that? All right, let's take the first part of this question. Now, according to Strong's Concordance, which the Strong's Concordance is really just a very fancy Bible studying tool, a book, it's very helpful if you wanna get into deep Bible study, but according to Strong's Concordance, the word prayer, praying, prayed, etc., is mentioned in the Bible a total of 375 times. 375 times, that is a lot of times. Clearly God is saying something. So I wanna throw out these Bible verses to you guys just so that we can make sure we have the right foundation about prayer. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Colossians 4, 2, devote yourself to prayer, be watchful and thankful. So clearly the Bible is telling us that we need to be praying. But the question is, I don't have a desire to do it. How do I change that, right? First, I wanna throw this out to you guys. There is nothing wrong with you, okay? If you're feeling like you don't have a desire to pray and you wanna change it, you know that you're supposed to pray. I wanna let you know and reassure you that nothing is wrong with you, okay? This is part of growing in our faith with God. So I just wanna throw this out to you guys because I, I felt like this is something that's important to mention. God gives his people specific gifts in the church. And and I've noticed particularly that with the gift of prophecy, when God equips people to prophesy and speak about coming events and speak and get have divine knowledge about things that are supposed to come to pass, I've noticed that God often uses those people to do intercessory prayer. And maybe you haven't heard that term before. Intercessory prayer is intercession, interceding, and just going after God's will and God's future plans for whatever he has spoken to you and really believing in faith and fighting in the spiritual realm. If you've ever met somebody like this who is is a really strong interceder. They pray for long, long periods of time. And let me just tell you guys, the Lord has imparted that gifting to me. So that's where God uses me. So I'm familiar with that. And that's why I'm speaking on it. But I want to let you guys know that there's nothing wrong with you if that's not how you are. I was just talking to my dad. We were um, talk, we were on a walk and my dad has the gift of teaching so he can teach and really articulate what the word of God is saying. And he was telling me, which I thought was really interesting because he's very mature in the faith in, in my opinion. And he said to me, you know, that it was really difficult for him when God calls him to seasons of deep prayer. It was really difficult for him to be desiring it and to be excited for it because that was not where he feels closest to God. Maybe you can relate with that because my dad even said, I feel closest to God when I'm studying God's word. Maybe that's you. Or maybe you feel closest to God when you're worshiping. Or maybe you feel closest to God when you're sharing with someone about Jesus. That's because God has imparted a specific gift to you and that's on purpose. So I just wanted to explain that really quickly because I think it's important for us to know that when you're hearing and seeing people who are talking about praying for hours and hours and hours and that's not something that you feel like you have a desire to do, it's probably because God's given you a gifting in a different area. And that doesn't mean we're not supposed to pray. Like I said, the the Bible mentions prayer, praying, prayed, that word 375 times. It's clearly important for us in growing our relationship with God and talking to God and really getting to know him. God says in his word, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. And Paul, who wrote 40% of the New Testament, says that we should be praying without ceasing. That means like literally never stopping to pray. Praying throughout our day, praying in every circumstance, with everything, we lift it up to God. That's what Paul is telling us to do in God's word. So in answering your, your question with how can I change that? How can I have that desire? I'm going to throw this question back at you. Have you asked God to put that desire in your heart? See, one thing I've noticed about Christian culture, especially now, is we are a culture very, very based on feeling and how we feel. Well, I just don't feel like praying, so I'm not going to pray. Well, I just don't feel it. I don't feel God. I feel, feel, feel. And listen, I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very in touch with my feelings kind of person. But a lot of times when I go into prayer with God, I don't necessarily feel like like it, but it's the desire, the supernatural desire that God puts on my heart because I have to pray for that desire that God can put it on my heart. Desire is willing to do it. It's a will. It's a will, right? So we have to have that will no matter what, no matter how we're feeling, we have to ask God to give us that will and that desire to pray. And that's our first thing. So this leads me into the 
second question. You might be asking yourself, how can I be disciplined in my prayer life when I just feel way too busy? And I wanna drop a truth bomb on you guys right now. So are you ready for it? I'm gonna drop a truth bomb. Discipline will never and can never happen without sacrifice. You cannot be disciplined. It will not and will never happen without sacrifice. This all relates to this idea of time, right? Being busy means we don't have enough time. And trust me, I know how that feels. I have a new baby. My baby's just about four months old and it's crazy. It's my first time doing it, obviously. It's my first baby and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of a learning curve. And a lot of times I felt like I've been so busy. I just don't have time. Plus I work part-time and I'm doing this YouTube channel. So I just feel like I'm very busy all the time, but it cannot happen without sacrifice. And that sacrifice is the sacrifice of time. I've seen a lot of conversation, I have even talked about this, how we can be incorporating prayer throughout our day, throughout the mundane tasks of our day, while doing the dishes, while walking around, going for a walk with the baby. That's how we can incorporate prayer. But I'm gonna tell you something else, and this is really important, this is really key, especially if you're starting out your prayer walk, as anyone, even if you're not a mom. You cannot have a strong prayer walk with God without having dedicated alone time. Now, the word alone might feel like a foreign concept if you're a parent because you feel like your kids are always around. And let me tell you something that you're not really gonna wanna hear. You're not going to be able to get that alone time unless you're willing to sacrifice sleep. And that's just the reality of it, guys, unless you can figure it out somehow between naps. But if you're a parent, it's gonna have to be that you're waking up earlier than your baby or your kids, or it's gonna be that you're staying up a little bit later than your kids. And that's hard, especially when you're tired. Trust me, I know, like I said, I have a new baby. This is hard to do, but it cannot happen without sacrifice. It cannot happen without that time. And we need to be alone with God. We can't have these distractions of our kids. And even we can't have these distractions of our spouse. If you're married, the spouse being around is not going to help you get personal and close with God because it's gonna feel like a distraction if they're in the room with you. You have to go be alone alone with God. So here's my challenge to you. I challenge you, if you're listening to this, to spend 15 minutes with God alone, what, right when you wake up, before the baby, your kids wake up, or right when you go to bed, but when your kids are already asleep. And if you don't have kids, obviously that doesn't apply to you. But regardless, it needs to be alone. It needs to be either a discipline that you do in the morning or a discipline that you do at night. I found that if you can do this, if you have this discipline, you start with 15 minutes, you can stretch it out, make it a little bit longer, and eventually the desire of prayer will stir up in you where you just wanna spend more time in prayer than 15 minutes. But start with 15 minutes. Start with something that's easy, so to speak. I mean, losing 15 minutes of sleep is not going to kill you. It won't, just won't. <laughs> and I'm not saying it's not hard, but it's going to be that discipline. It's going to be that time and that sacrifice that you give to God. Now this leads me into my last question. So it's the how question. How do I do it? How do I hear from God? How do I know when God is speaking to me? What do I even do during this 15 minute period of time? Maybe you have never really spent intentional prayer time with the Lord. And I want to tell you guys something that really, really helped me when I first got started. So when I first got started in my prayer journey, I realized pretty quickly that I would go wander off, daydream, all, you know, I just felt like I could not focus. So one thing that really helped me, and maybe you're not a journaler, and I'm not saying you have to journal your feelings or anything like that if that's not your thing, but what I do suggest you doing if you need something tangible, if you can't just sit there and pray, what I did is I started writing letters to God. When I was 18 years old, I bought a big journal, and I started writing a letter to God every day, and it was always about what was going on with my life, it was always where I was at, and I spent that time writing a letter to God, and it's actually really cool looking back at those letters even when I was 18, you know, because fast forward five years later, life looks a lot different, but the Lord was growing and teaching me. I love looking back on that. So that's also really special about doing this and writing letters to God because it's literally just like your prayer. Now, let me tell you something fun. The, one of the longest books in the Bible is called the Psalms, if you didn't already know that, the Psalms. It's a big book in the Bible. If you open your Bible halfway, it's probably going to be right there, right in front of your face, smack dab in the middle. The Psalms is a collection of musicians, of poets, and of authors who have literally poured out their hearts to God in a letter type form. Now there are songs, but also when you read it, it almost forms itself like a letter, like they're calling out to God. I want to share something specific with you that one of the main authors, David, wrote. David shared in a verse, he says in Psalms 6.6, 6, I am weird with my moaning. Every night I drench my bed in tears. I drench my couch with weeping. So hold on, Sila. Wait, you're telling me that I don't have to go and say the perfect words to God. I don't have to say, you know, a verse here and, and just make it this long dialogue script. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can literally just be me telling God that I was weeping on my couch. Yes, 
sins. And you know what? The Bible calls, God calls David in the Bible a man after his own heart. Why do you think David had that calling? Why do you think God gave that label to David? Because David knew how to do this. David knew how to cry out to God in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his trials, because we know that life because of sin is full of trials and it's full of just hard things, right? And David knew that where he needed to go, where he needed to run was to write out. David was a musician, so in his case, he was writing out songs. But this can also be applicable to you if you just wanna write letters. And I'm telling you guys, once I started doing this, it drastically changed the way that I prayed because I could start to really focus on what I wanted to talk to God about. Now, here's the last thing I wanna say about this. That last five minutes, so you spend 10 minutes really just meditating, thinking about it. Let God, though, respond to you. Sometimes God would lead me to certain scriptures. Sometimes God would literally fill me with the Spirit and respond to me on the page. And yes, He can do that. Yes, His Holy Spirit is moving today. And yes, He can speak to you today. I also wanna just slightly add to that God would never say something to you that's contrary to the Bible. So God would not tell you, I hate you, you're dumb. That's not what He would say. God says that He has unconditional love for us. So make sure that when you are getting something from God, that it lines up with the Bible. If you're not sure and you don't know, check with somebody that's more mature in the faith with you. Good idea to talk to a pastor or a mentor at church. But anyway, I just want to precaution that because God would never say something contrary to his word. But make sure you give God a chance to respond to you. He wants to talk to you. This is a two-way relationship. This is not just you talking to him and him not responding or not just him talking to you and you not responding. It takes a connection. It takes a relationship for this to work. And that's really what prayer is, guys. It's talking to God. It's conversating with God. But it cannot happen without discipline. It cannot happen without sacrifice. It cannot happen without a plan. You've got to know what to do. You have to have a game plan to get this going. And so again, I challenge you guys, 15 minutes, whether it's right in the morning or right at night, alone time with God, and try out these things that I've been telling you and watch and see what God can do because he wants to meet you in the place of prayer. That's where he wants to meet you. Even if it's not your gifting to sit there for hours and intercede, God still wants to talk to you. He wants to grow you in this because God wants you to get to know his heart for you because he loves you and he's seeking after you. Even now, he's seeking after you. That's why he has you listening to this video. So if you take anything away from this video, I hope that it would be that really God just wants to talk to you and God wants to have a relationship with you and he wants you to talk to him. This is a two-way relationship. This is an amazing thing and I promise you, the Bible, like I said, says when you seek God with your whole heart, you will find him. Seeking him with your whole heart looks a lot like discipline. It looks a lot like sacrifice and that's going to be hard work. It's going to take time, but when you do it, you will not regret it. It's the best thing that I get to do in my day is spending that time with the Lord. I'm not always perfect. I don't always do it and that's something I'm growing in, but we need to have this and we need to make this a focus especially going into this year I challenge you guys in 2021 make this a year of focusing on really getting your prayer life solid with the Lord all right so those are some basics that I wanted to share with you guys today I hope it was helpful for you don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell so you never miss a video that I put out I'm gonna go ahead and pray for you if you're still here if you're still hanging on I want to pray for you that God would put a deep desire in your heart to seek him in prayer because he wants you to talk to him that's what he wants he wants a relationship with you and so I'm gonna pray for you that that would happen so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it Lord God, I thank you so much for the people that are still here listening to this video, God, that you are speaking to them right now, God, that you want, God, them to pursue you because, God, your hand has always been stretched out to them. God, your hand has always been seeking them out, but, God, it takes action on their end to be able to respond to you, and so I pray for that desire. I pray for that action. I pray, God, that they would sacrifice their time and their day, whatever it looks like, God, to seek you first and alone without their kids around, God, as hard as it might be, God, would that be something that becomes a priority to them more than any? Anything else that they do, would it be a priority to them, God? Lord, I pray, God, that the flesh would not overcome what your spirit wants to do, God, but that you would just penetrate their hearts, God, and that they would just have a deep desire to talk to you, to pray with you, God, to seek you first and to hear from you so that you can speak your truth over their life. God, I thank you for them. And again, I pray for a deep desire to seek you first above all things. God, your word says that when we seek you first, all of these things in, in heaven shall be added unto us. And so, God, I pray that over them, and I pray that they would seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a great day.